Movie tone flies for the Air Forces of President Chiang Kai Shek. This is an actual bombing raid, and as we sight the first of the rebel villages, we commence the attack. Chiang Kai Shek is making desperate efforts to unite the various provinces of China, many of which are drawn by internal dissension. And if he can't do it one way, he tries another, including bombs. To keep revolutionary forces intact for the war against the Japanese in the north, in October 1934, the Central Red Army, the 25th Army Group, the 4th Front Army, and the 2nd and 6th Army Groups began a series of maneuvers that would eventually become the Long March. After Communist forces breached three of defensive lines, Chiang Kai-shek himself assumed command from Nanchang. He sent an army of 400,000 to both sides of the Xiangjiang River, attempting to wipe out the Red Army in one fell swoop. In January 1935, events took another historic turn in Zunyi, Guizhou province, when the CPC Central Committee held an enlarged meeting of the Politburo. The Zunyi Conference established Mao Zedong as the de facto leader of the CPC and Red Army. Marxism became the party's guiding ideology. It was here that the first generation of CPC leaders began to take shape, with Mao Zedong at its core. A new era of the CPC working independently to solve domestic problems began. It was a critical moment in the history of the CPC. Later, the Central Red Army passed through the E populated area without incident before crossing the Jinsha River deftly and the Dadu River forcefully, capturing the Lu Ding Bridge crossing the Jiajin Mountains and then marching across the Songpan grasslands. In October 1936, the second and fourth front armies arrived at Huining and Yang Taibu in Gansu, where they joined forces with the first front army. The link-up of the three main Red Army forces marked the triumphant end of the Long March. During the Long March, the Red Army, having fought some 600 battles, crossed over 40 mountains and nearly a hundred rivers, was in its own right a legend in the history of warfare. Mao Zedong remarked on the significance of the Long March. He called it a manifesto, a propaganda force a seeding machine that culminated in victory for us and defeat for the enemy.